so welcome to Ed's Model Madness again. Today I'm going to show you five of my F-14 builds. Now these are all from different kit, well not all, but different kit manufacturers. Uh, this one here on the end, this is an F-14 Bravo and this is in the markings of VF-103, the Sluggers. This is a Revell kit. Now one of the things that I did with this particular kit is I had to add the drop tanks. None of the Revell kits had drop tanks in them. All of the squadrons that I was in, whenever we did a deployment or went to the ship or anything like that, we always had drop tanks on the aircraft. So it just looked a little strange without the drop tanks to me. So I went ahead and I found somebody that was doing resin drop tanks and I don't know who it was now, but I ordered, gosh, I think enough to do six different models. And uh, so these are five of them, and I think I got two more drop tanks sitting somewhere in a stash. This particular one here is set up as an air-to-air. -air. Uh, you'll notice that it has the missiles underneath the center of the belly there. Um, those are Phoenix missiles. And uh, like I said, this aircraft is set up strictly for air-to-air, -air, and this is VF-103 with the F-14 Bravo. This is a Revell kit, by the way, Revell Monogram, 148 scale. Now, this next kit, also Revell Monogram. This is, again, VF-103. But you'll notice that the tail markings are a little bit different. And this one is set up with some laser-guided bombs underneath the belly of the aircraft. This is set up as air-to-ground. Uh, on the nose, you'll notice it says FLIRCAT. Now that was, uh, you can actually uh, do a Google search for FLIR CAT and you can see the pictures of the real airplane, 213. This is the aircraft that was used to help with the development of the lantern pod. Okay, right here is the lantern pod and uh, my squadron helped to develop that. Uh, we did operational tests for the uh, manufacturer when it was in development and we were actually the first squadron to take lantern to see on an operational aircraft. So that was kind of cool as well. My VF-103 Jolly Rogers F-14. Now I've done a video on this one already and uh, you guys can go back and take a look at that one if you'd like. Now this particular model uh, that you're looking at, 148 scale F-14 Bravo, this is a Hobby Boss kit. Uh, it's got rubber tires. Uh, it's got a little bit more detail in the cockpit than the Revell kits, but the price on this thing is way, way inflated. So, um, for what you get uh, between all of them, honestly, I think the Revell kits are the better bargain, but if you're one that's really into details and stuff like this, this is definitely a good kit. Now, one thing that I don't particularly care for is you'll notice that I was able to move that one wing while the other one did not move. Now the rest of these kits, you move one wing and both of the wings will move. I'm trying to demonstrate that so you can see it. And my camera's not working with me too well here. But as you see, as I move the wing, the other wings moving too because they're all kind of meshed together now i don't remember which one it is actually i think it might be this one this is my diamondback model again f14 i want to say that this is an academy um this one started out as an f14a and i bought the engine can uh, mod for this so that I could put the GE F-110 engine uh, exhausts on it. And I had to modify the back end of the airplane a little bit to make all of that work. But um, I wanted to build this as, like I said, a VF-102. I was in this command during the uh, uh, Operation Enduring Freedom. You can go and look and see some of, uh, some of my photos in my, uh, my Navy flashback video. Uh, so you can see some of the commands that I've been in. Um, anyway, I know I'm rambling a little bit, so let's take a look. Last one that I got here, again, 148 scale. This one is done 
as VX9. Uh, this is a reveal kit also. And again, uh, the wings will sweep both sides are geared together so not the best detail on this particular kit like i said uh, but for the price um, i think that this is really a good bargain now the vx9 was a uh, development squadron and they had this one aircraft that was painted pure black this was actually the last f-14 that was manufactured by Grumman. The, the serial number on this model uh, matches the, the last F-14 that, that was manufactured. This aircraft itself is now sitting at Oceana in Virginia Beach as a, uh, a front gate guard. It's no longer in the black paint scheme though. Yeah, so this aircraft is still, it's, it's a museum piece. Anyway, uh, just wanted to give you guys a, a really quick look now I have another F-14 that I'm going to be doing sometime in the future. And it is an AMK F-14D. And the thing that I wanted to talk about on that particular model versus these is that you can actually build it with the wings spread. Okay, not a big deal. I can spread the wings on these, right? but you can also build it with the slats down and the flaps down. Now that is different. Uh, once you do that, you cannot move the wings back and forth. They have to stay out at a full 20 degree. So I'll be doing a uh, unboxing uh, kit review on that before I build it, but it's gonna be a little bit of time with the upcoming move. So I wanted to at least show you the five F-14s that I got uh, before I boxed them up because of the move. So hopefully they'll survive and uh, not get all broken up. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification button down there so you know when I'm putting out a new video. And as usual, leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. And have a really, really great day. God bless each and every one of you. And we'll see you again soon. Bye.